Welcome to Pop Paul's Workshop. I've got an exciting project to do today. I am making a utility box that goes in the back of a police cruiser to, for the officer to be able to store all of his equipment. And I'm making an inlaid flag to be able to go into the top of it with the CNC machine. So you're not gonna wanna miss this video. So let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes. It really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendation back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. This DIY storage utility box is designed for a Tahoe and this is for a local police officer that I want to be able to do this for. And this is the plans that I'm using. And to begin with, we've got to cut out the bottom. And this is 38 by 38. I went ahead and cut out not only the bottom, but it was time to be able to cut all of the different components. What I'm trying to do in essence with the little sketch that I had, which is my plans, I'm able to cut all of the parts and, in essence, create a kit. And I want to be able to cut out all of the parts before I begin assembling anything. Now, the design of this utility box calls for two full extension drawers that will be able to store a lot of the equipment that he needs to be able to have available on a daily basis to him. And yet, it'll be able to be kept organized and virtually out of sight. With all the different parts cut out now, it's time to be able to do the rabbit joint that I need to be able to help hold this entire utility box together. And I'm using a router table to do this. And with this cut, you can actually see just how well that this joint fits together. Now I used a half inch router bit and it did take several passes but the results are remarkable. It really cut fantastic. The last thing that I want to do is actually dry fit everything together. I want to make sure that this is going to fit and that all my measurements are correct and to avoid any surprises. You also notice that I'm using the corner clamps that I had made in a previous video. So I'll leave in the description below a link to that video to be able to show you exactly how I made these corner clamps. These clamps work extremely well and I highly recommend that everyone have a clamp like this in their shop. But now let's move on. I want to be able to show you how this looks all dry fitted together and the only thing that's holding it at this point is the clamps. The good thing is all of the measurements work everything fits. So the next is time to pre-paint this entire cabinet. Believe it or not, pre-painting really saves a lot of time because it would be very difficult to be able to drag this entire cabinet outside to be able to paint. This way, painting the individual components, much, much easier. And with the paint dry, it's time to begin the assembly. So using a lot of glue and the nails, it's time to put this entire cabinet together. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like with it all together with this black paint. I think it's going to look awesome. Now one of the nice things that it really helps to make this a lot easier to assemble is that I had my son in the shop for this day to be able to help get everything together. Having that extra set of hands really was nice to be able to uh, have help hold this while I get everything in place 
and nail it together. Having him visit and help in the shop is a real pleasure. In addition to having the extra hands in the shop, it also is really nice to be able to have this designed using the rabbit joints. It makes it very, very easy for these extra components to be able to go together. With the glue, it slides into position exactly where it needs to be, and all I need to do is just nail it together. After getting everything assembled, I decided that I wanted to be able to put in one additional strip to be able to provide some extra support for the back of the cabinet where the drawers uh, are and to be able to help support the lid on this storage compartment. So yes, I didn't paint it and I'm going to have to paint it after the fact, but I did want to go ahead and get this component in place because I think it will add a little bit more stability uh, that I'm looking for. And of course I'm using plenty of glue and I'm going to nail it in position and then go ahead and paint it so it matches everything else. Now the next part of this cabinet is important. The person that I'm building this for wanted to have the American flag on top of this cabinet. And we had talked about a lot of different things where I was going to laser the flag or the different types of flag. And it turned out I'm actually going to make the whole top the American flag and just have it bordered with the black of the cabinet itself. So that's the next step in building this process is to go ahead and make the American flag. So to begin with, it's time to cut out all of these stripes. Now these stripes are going to be one inch wide and then they're going to be the 24 and a half inches long. And I'm going to get all of this cut. Now I've done a video on making this and I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description below to reference you to the video on exactly how I made this flag. But with all the stripes cut, I'm just going to lay them out, make sure that they all look good, and I can actually put them and position them where I want them. Now you also notice that some are a little bit long. Reason being, I cut all of them at one time out of the same stock material. But now I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the uh, Mita saw and get them exactly cut the link. But it's coming together. It's starting to look like a flag. At the Mita saw, I set my fence stop at 24 and a half inches. That way I can cut all six stripes exactly the same length without having to measure each time. Once that is done, I'm going to grab the union. And the union actually will make up part of my measurement. This actually accomplishes a couple of things. One, I don't have to reset up my stop on the miter saw. I can use the exact same setting because now the union is part of the measurement, which really is as part the way it should be. Because now by cutting this short stripe with that union in place, it gives me the exact correct length. Now that all of it's cut, let's go ahead and pre-assemble everything and let's take a look at it. Everything looks good, everything fits, so now it's time to be able to go ahead and get the torch out and we'll do the burning. I like to be able to burn it first and then stain everything. So I'm using the torch in slow deliberate motion to be able to get an even burn across all of the different components. And this really goes very quickly. So if you've never done this before, don't be intimidated. This works very well. And it's basically the same type techniques that you would use if you were painting. Well, it's time for stain. Now I'm using a True Blue stain from Minwax. And this is a clear tint, water-based. And this really works well. I've been using this for quite a while. And the results are fantastic. And if you look at it, that burn actually shows through and it just looks gorgeous. Now I do like to be able to stain all six sides. And the reason I want to stain all six sides, it actually helps to reduce the warping of the wood. Because if you only stain one side, it does have a tendency to warp and we really don't want that. 
So keep that tip in mind, stain all six sides of the material. As far as the red, I do the exact same thing. Now that all that's completed, it's time to be able to cut the stars on the Union. Now I'm using the easel software and I'm using this file that I have publicly shared on the Inventable Project page. So here I'm just going to go ahead and probe to set my Z height and I'm going to start cutting, cutting all of the different stars. Now this really doesn't take a lot of time to be able to do and you'll notice I'm also using clamps. There's really no reason to use the glue and tape method here because I'm not cutting all the way through. And again, if you're familiar with my different videos, you know typically I always use glue and tape method. But now that this is done, I'm going to give you a good close-up look at what it looks like. And those stars look fantastic. So it's time to go ahead and put this flag together. And let's take a quick look at it. That looks nice. I think that is a beautiful, beautiful flag. It's time to be able to go ahead and assemble this now. So the black around it is part of the top of the cabinet. So in essence, this flag is an inlay into this top. And I think it's going to look really great. Moving on as far as the building of the drawers, I'm using the exact same technique that I've used before on my drawers. And I'll put a link to that video in the description below as well. I'm not going to waste your time here on how these go together. But again, I'm using the uh, rabbit joints on the ends. I am just using the glue and the nails to be able to assemble everything together. I want to be able to turn my attention now to the drawer fronts. This cutout is going to be the handhold to be able to open the drawers up. I don't want to have any type of big heavy duty handles or anything that would get in the way or catch on stuff. By making this cutout, it will easily be able to reach in, grab the drawer, and open it. Once I finish with the bandsaw, I'll take this over to the um, oscillating sander sand it smooth, and it'll be ready to paint. I have shown a number of ways to be able to install these full extension drawer rollers. And today I want to show you yet another way. Now these can be really at any height that you want them to be. It really does not matter. But what I've chose to do is just cut a scrap piece of wood to be able to slide in here, and that way when I put the drawer slide on it, it is perfectly level and smooth. So that's exactly where I want it. And I can repeat that on each side for both of the drawers. So the only thing that I need to be able to do is just go ahead and screw this in. The other thing that I want to point out is that the distance from this edge back to the beginning of the drawer slide should be about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just going to eyeball that and then I'm just going to go ahead and screw it into uh, position. Now I'm going to install the drawers the same exact way. I cut a little spacer block and this is going to be a quarter inch above this and that's a little bit higher than normal but I want that extra space there. So the drawers will be able to sit on this and then I'll be able to slide them out and screw in the drawer slides. And I have that set up on both sides. And that way, again, the drawer will be perfectly level. I've installed the drawer and it's just sitting on the blocks right now. And with this, I can just pull this out till it's flush with the front edge of the drawer. And then I'll be able to screw it in and do that on each side and be able to pull it out further. And again, I'm putting three screws in each side. Now that I have that first screw in place, I can go ahead and pull the drawer out. And the only thing I need to do is just move it a little bit left and right until the hole is exposed so I can drill and screw in that next one. So with my awl, I'll go ahead and make a little hole and 
then just put the screw into it. And you can be assured that the drawer is still perfectly level at this point. Now realize too, I'm showing you just one side. I'm actually moving from the left to the right side of the drawer. Now all I have to do is just remove the box and it's done. Perfect. I have the lid cut out to be able to have on top of this utility box, but I'm cutting out now a handhold to be able to be able to grab that lid and open it up. And the easiest way to do that was just to be able to cut the oval hole and use the trim router with a quarter inch roundover bit to be able to make it where it was just easier and uh, more comfortable on the hand to be able to open and close this lid. And of course, I'm gonna do this on both sides. Now it's time to reveal the flag after everything is painted and uh, all glued up. And I'm ready to be able to mount this top onto the utility box itself. Now, as I had said earlier, we had tossed around a lot of different ideas on what type of flag and how it should look and how big the flag should be. And I think in the end, after all the discussion, this truly was the best solution. This flag and this size on top of this utility cabinet looks absolutely gorgeous. Now I want to be able to take a look and show you the finished cabinet. I think that he is going to really enjoy having this in the back of his police unit to be able to store all of his equipment in. I also love having the full extension drawers because it makes it where you can easily have access to all of the equipment that will be in there. And the extra storage space on back is perfect for those items that you don't use all the time. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.